we can start, I believe. Uh, welcome to the Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce uh, for Russia in Russia uh, web launch meetings of today. Uh, I would like to uh, greet uh, my chairman, Mr. Van Dorselaar, present today with us. And uh, of course, our main speaker, Erzena, the senior lawyer at uh, our long-standing member, uh, Euralink company. Uh, Stefan, maybe you will then open with okay. some welcome words. Thanks, um, Oleg. I know you're always right on time starting the webinar, so uh, I hope uh, everybody's here already. Um, welcome from my side. Uh, also, already thanks to, uh, to Euralink and Eugenia for uh, helping us today, trying to get some clarity in all the new legislations, rules, counter sanctions. Um, I remember when I um, became responsible for our company in Russia, and I saw a very big accounting department and a very big legal department. I thought by myself, oh, I see a big room for optimization. Um, so many years later, our legal department and accounting department only became bigger instead of smaller. And I think for many of you, I think uh, Russia is a country where, where uh, accounting, finance, but also legal uh, is very dominant in your business. Uh, also, because there is a lot of rules to apply, uh, but also rules and legislation, which is changing quite often and quite fast. Eh? So I think the role of a good legal uh, advisor or a legal company is, uh, is for sure uh, there. Uh, and I think this, seeing lately the, the circumstances with, with, with sanctions, with counter sanctions, what is allowed, what is not allowed, um, I think uh, the need for external help is, uh, is for sure um, needed. Uh, but for today, I think uh, we would like to give, or Euralink eh, would like to give a small um, introduction about, okay, what are now some things happening with migration? What are the latest status on that um, payment X issues. Uh, if you have a contract, can you still execute a contract? What about the payments? Um, there is this, or was this draft law about nationalization, but I think it's not signed. Uh, so there's a lot of things, a lot of questions, um, and I'm very happy Ergenia is joining us. Uh, I think she's doing, no, I know she's doing a lot of overtime the last couple of weeks. So I'm very happy you made some time available for us. Um, and also, I think at the end, we have some time for questions and answers, uh, very practical questions. You're always welcome. And I think if, if Eugenia, if we can't answer them immediately, we'll come back to that for sure later. So thanks again. Uh, thanks, Oleg, for organizing this. And I'm, uh, I'm listening to Eugenia now. Mm, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, as um, colleagues told, I will shortly try to update you on the legal status, uh, what is going on in the course of the current situation. Um, I will start with labor and migration law. Um, uh, why? Because um, now it is very usual question how to cut costs. And uh, the first uh, option, of course, is a staff dismissal and termination of uh, lease or rental contracts. Um, when we're talking about uh, reduction of costs, uh, it's possible, um, it's an option not to fire people. For example, you can uh, reduce working hours and consequently to reduce the salary of people, then to send them uh, to vacation, paid or unpaid vacation, uh, or to introduce um, downtime. Downtime is a special period um, when the employer cannot provide work for employees, uh, at this time, uh, the salary is paid at the, at the rate of two thirds of a monthly salary to employee. But um, in case still the decision was made to dismiss people, uh, we are talking about two options. And we are not talking now about um, dismissal um, um, because of violation of the um, employment obligations by employee but we're talking about other options. First one is the staff uh, redundancy. Uh, this we um, highly want to recommend to justificate uh, your redundancy. 
not to mention that the redundancy is based on the sanctions or political climate uh, among the reasons of redundancy. So uh, the staff redundancy is a quite long-term procedure and uh, the severance payment for such procedure to employee is up to five salaries. Uh, please note that there are certain categories of people who are prohibited for dismissal under such grounds. Uh, they are um, pregnant women, uh, women with, women with a child under three years old, um, under single mothers, uh, and the same is uh, for fathers also. So please check this with your HR department very carefully before taking a decision on staff redundancy. And the second option is uh, more or less very popular. It's a termination contract, conclusion of a termination contract. Uh, the pluses of it that there is no notice period of employee and no actually set uh, severance payment for employee. But uh, in practice, it is uh, wise to offer people some severance payment and normally it can be up to five, six salaries, almost the same as uh, the severance payments uh, at the redundancy. Um, well, but uh, we would like to note that uh, in any case, all mass dismissals are very risky now. As the uh, corona crisis showed us, uh, the courts, the Russian courts, are uh, mostly on the side of the employee. And, um, and we, uh, for sure, I may say that in this crisis, uh, it will be the same and even more, I think. Um, well, I think for the labor, that is all. Um, it, I will try. I try to explain it shortly. If you need more explanation, I can, we can provide it later. Um, then, um, regarding migration sphere, actually, there were not so many changes in this sphere nowadays, but there is still need to undergo medical examination for foreigners who came for employment um, reasons and uh, stay in Russia more than thirty days in one stay. Uh, the only um, change here is that the medical statements now are valid for one year, not three years, as it was previously. So actually the medical check for a person is just to be done once a year, shortly. Uh, also, there is a draft law which, allows, which will allow um, highly qualified specialists to get uh, the uh, residence permit for unlimited period. Now it is possible to get such uh, uh, residence permit only for three years uh, for the same uh, term uh, as a working permit of such person. Um, some restrictions were um, um, applied for certain uh, group categories of people like journalists, diplomats. For example, for journalists or official delegations it's not possible just to get a simplified procedure to get a simplified procedure to get visas and diplomats cannot travel with their diplomatic passports. They also need visas. So in shortly uh, say that um, the changes are only for special category, but for business, it is uh, the same. Uh, you can apply for any type of visa, which is provided by law. Uh, so uh, no changes in this area. Uh, for this, uh, I think, bullet, that is, that's it. Um, I will move to consequences of sanctions, some payment uh, issues, and just from practical point of view, because actually uh, we also do not have uh, answers on many questions, unfortunately. I will just share, maybe, maybe you um, miss something, maybe I can, I don't know, <laughs> fresh your mind. Um, I will shortly introduce some limitations and supporting measures which we have now in Russia. But first of all, the government has introduced a list of countries of, uh, um, of unfriendly nations. Uh, there are 22 countries uh, which supported sanctions against uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, well, the, the, the old 
quite a long old limitation that uh, the Russian companies shall sell 80% of their um, incoming currency. Uh, then um, also suspended transfers from Russian accounts of the non-residents. This is concerns, concerned um, representative offices and um, branch offices of uh, foreign legal entities in Russia. Uh, also, the moratorium on bankruptcy was introduced for six months. This is a supporting measure um, just uh, to support the companies from bankruptcy, from dismissal of staff or closing the business. Um, recently, parallel import was also allowed. Uh, well, there are many more limitations and many more uh, support measures. Um, we do not, we will not uh, just list them all, and move to also the very painful, I think, uh, problem is uh, payments. Um, although there is no ban to make payments in currency between Russia and Europe, we still have uh, so many requests, so many problems in this sphere. And actually, um, to solve these problems are not very easy. It's not very easy because uh, for now we have the following problems. It's like uh, European banks do not accept operations in rubles. Uh, some of the European banks, before process a payment, uh, ask to disclose uh, Russian beneficiary owner uh, of the monetary funds recipient to eliminate the fact that the recipient of the monetary funds is on a sanction list. Uh, we, uh, in Euralink, we provide such service. We are now very busy with checking uh, uh, a lot of companies on such on uh, to check them if they are or their beneficiary owner is a sanction list. We provide a certain profile of the companies, and uh, we uh, yes, we have really really um, a lot of uh, such kind of requests. This is all because of uh, making payments. Um, also, uh, now in practice, uh, the the monetary funds from Europe uh, easily come uh, to Russia. But um, on the contrary, uh, from Russia, it's not so easy to um, pay, uh, to transfer the money to Europe. And it, it, it depends probably on the bank. It depends, we don't know, uh, on the, um, the contract, for example. Uh, with the service contract, we do not have such problems. Uh, we have delays. Uh, for example, the, the, the monetary funds will be transferred in, in, a, in a week than in, in, not in two days, for example, or not immediately. But with the sales contract, we notice that um, and the monetary funds uh, uh, just uh, keep uh, just kept on the at the correspondent bank for two uh, weeks, and then the monetary fund returns returns. Um, also, we faced with the dividend payment uh, problem in currency. There is no direct prohibition to um, pay a dividend in currency. However, uh, the Russian bank just stopped uh, and put on hold the payment uh, with the official answer that um, we put this transfer on hold because uh, we are waiting further clarifications. But they do not um, inform uh, from whom they are waiting such clarifications. And, um, so now we're just waiting and we don't know uh, who can answer us uh, or more, uh, who can provide more information in this regard. And uh, we suppose, of course, that there is um, a certain internal, uh, maybe uh, orders from the central bank to keep the money in the country or something, we, we don't know. Maybe payment to dividend in rubles has no problems, but, but again, uh, Rush, uh, European banks uh, cannot accept Russian rubles. So that is like a, a quite a big uh, problem here. Um, we, of course, recommend, first of all, to uh, uh, address your question to a currency control of your bank, but unfortunately that is not really helpful so far. And um, 
we would like uh, I, I will be very happy to hear maybe uh, your practical situation how you solve all these uh, difficulties maybe which banks are more loyal uh, maybe it's easier now to open a bank account in another bank and do not have such problems so uh, please um, if you have something just share um, then uh, I think uh, next, uh, important also to tell about contracts execution. You know that um, since of these restrictions, sanctions, um, it is very difficult or even impossible to um, execute supply contracts, uh, supply of the equipment which is located in uh, Europe. Uh, we first of all uh, recommend to very carefully uh, review the contract and um, most and namely provisions on, on force majeure and uh, termination of, of the contract. If, if it's possible to apply force majeure, then um, the obligations can be postponed until the, such uh, circumstances will finalized. However, often the counterparty, um, they ask to provide an official uh, proof or the, the contract uh, has such a provision provision that uh, uh, official proof from the um, do, from um, uh, state body is required to prove the force majeure circumstances in Russia such state body the Chamber of Commerce and Trade and they uh, recently made a letter uh, which says that they do not receive um, applications regarding um, sanctions they not receive uh, they do not accept it they do not re uh, consider such foreign sanctions as a force majeure and they are waiting for a law new law which will allow them to use uh, to uh, consider such foreign sanctions as force majeure so uh, what shall the companies do uh, if it's not possible to um, apply to force majeure, we recommend, of course, negotiations. Uh, the company, due to significant change in circumstances, may require um, to change the contract uh, to conclude an additional, by conclusion of uh, an additional agreement, or to terminate the contract. Uh, when you are negotiating um, additional agreement, we recommend you to reconsider all points not only, for example, not only uh, the point on supply, uh, the, the changes in the term of the goods supply. It is uh, worth to check all, all provisions from the very beginning, to check um, the payment details, to check uh, penalties, to check um, um, contract, unilateral contract termination, and to, to, to make it more um, precise because you already know that some, that everything can happen. Um, then um, also, if we are talking about contract termination, it is also required to check a contract very carefully because some contracts do not provide such option. And to terminate the contract is um, getting even more uh, expensive than to conclude an additional agreement. But uh, each um, situation is unique. So uh, we need, uh, of course, we, we um, I'm telling you how we usually um, deal with it, but uh, of course, uh, maybe it depends on a certain uh, goods, on certain equipment, if it's possible to find a similar good somewhere, uh, etc. So each situation is unique. Um, well, then I think it's, um, it's time to, tell, to, to talk about uh, draft laws. Uh, about uh, very interesting stories about all this uh, social media news uh, about nationalization, um, criminal liability of the director. Uh, these news were very loud. A lot of people were very scared, and we have numerous of requests on such um, uh, in, on such regard. Um, well, first, it's um, what is nationalization? It's like a just so-called nationalization, the, the, the draft law was on external administration uh, of the management. Of, this is only actually for big companies with uh, more than 
percent of uh, foreign uh, participation, uh, employees 100, 100 employees and um, uh, assets worth 1 billion rubles. Um, at this moment, this draft law was not even introduced uh, to the state Duma. And moreover, yesterday there were news that this draft law was uh, put on hold. The reason is that, that factually not so many companies really left the country. They have just put uh, all their operations on hold uh, and actually um, there were no liquidation of such companies, no bankruptcy procedures. Um, uh, there is also one more um, change regarding nationalization. Is this, uh, there are changes to the criminal code, uh, oh, sorry, to the civil code um, on property nationalization. Uh, it is, um, in general, the changes are that the subjects of the Russian Federation may um, national, nationalize uh, properties um, on the territory of the Russian Federation, um, which uh, belong to unfriendly foreign states. The cost of the property will not be returned. The specific procedure will be approved by the law of a certain uh, subject of the Russian Federation. Uh, but the draft uh, have to undergo and pass several um, readings in the State Duma. And of course, it uh, will change its text uh, significantly. Um, please note that uh, the draft was uh, submitted to the State Duma by the Republic of Crimea. And the main motive, uh, according to the head of the Republic, was that uh, the nationalized uh, national nationalization of the property, um, which is located on the territory of the Russian Federation, of Ukrainian oligarchs, politicians, and state officials who openly support Nazism and the Kyiv regime. So um, that is uh, two drafts about uh, nationalization and um, our. Um, um, interest in uh, law, uh, our criminal liability of the general director. Um, we also received uh, a lot of requests uh, from the general director who were scared because uh, um, somebody told that uh, now the, if the company decides to leave the Russian market or to liquidate the company, the general director, director will be criminally liable for this. Um, there is no uh, special legal act for the general director uh, related to sanctions. Now uh, there is a draft law. There is a draft law with changes to the criminal code and it says about abuse of authority, which means that uh, the general director uses uh, his powers contrary to the legitimate interests of the company um, uh, in order to fulfill the decision of foreign unfriendly states to impose restrictive measures against the Russian Federation. Uh, but the, uh, well, the punishment for such a crime is a fine up to 1 million rubles or imprisonment uh, for up to 10 years. Uh, we think that such article is uh, very vague and uncertain. Uh, we will be waiting for further explanations and clarifications because it's very um, difficult to assess which actions will uh, fall under such a crime composition. In, uh, time will show and uh, probably practice. But uh, as an example, for example, if the company uh, if the company decides not to work with the bank which is under sanctions, then uh, the director will be liable for this. But the company has the right to conclude uh, contracts with uh, or to conclude and open uh, the banking accounts in, in any bank. So the company may easily open a new bank and work with another bank and not closing bank account uh, at the bank with uh, under sanctions. So it's quite, um, well, and also since the general director is the responsible person in any case 
not only in the period of sanctions. It was always like this. There are a lot of uh, articles in administrative code, in the criminal code. The gen general director is liable for a lot of things. And uh, they are bankruptcy, fraud, uh, some labor issues. Well, so you have to just be, to know that you have to um, act in accordance with law and uh, to be sure that you, you do um, everything um, in line with, with the law. Uh, of course, we highly recommend not to make uh, loud announcements about foreign sanctions, about uh, decisions to suspend or leave uh, the market, to stop activities. Even if the, this, such decision was made by foreign shareholders, but uh, while making things in line with the law, paying taxes, paying salaries, uh, debts, uh, executing the contracts, having no conflicts with employees, we see a very little risk in this regard. Um, and we, when making such announcements um, about sanction support or similar, um, of course, the state bodies may um, pay more attention to your company. Um, they can arrange inspections, they can arrange audits, um, etc. But uh, please know that such inspections on, also can be um, as a result of a complaint of offended employee of a third party, for example. Uh, so you never know. You never know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's always a risk. Uh, well, um, and I will move to my final part. It will be, it will be very short. Um, it's uh, other impacts of uh, the current situation. Well, um, there are so many news from different European countries that they open borders for Russian people, that it is easy to obtain uh, visas, even tourism visas to Europe, which is very positive news. However, Belgium and the Netherlands are not uh, in this list because Belgium now issue, issues uh, visas only um, on family motives. And the Netherlands, they... Um, can provide you uh, a business visa, for example, but they do not give a guarantee that you will be let in at the border because business purpose is not on the list, on the exceptional list um, set by the government of the Netherlands. So nobody can guarantee that uh, everything will go smoothly. So before sending your colleagues uh, partners uh, to Europe, uh, please check carefully uh, how, which uh, visa from which country to, uh, to make such a, a visa. And then we also faced uh, with the mailbox problem. A few of our clients cannot receive um, emails from our mailbox. We have Yandex. Uh, the, firstly, uh, the reason is with their service, probably. Our IT guys from Moscow, they cannot do anything and they cannot solve this problem. Um, they say, but they say that we are not the only one and they have already uh, have the same um, problems with their other clients. And they suppose, suppose that the blocking uh, is not uh, at the Yandex level, but at the level of domain or at the level of Russian IP addresses. Actually, we don't know if we can um, also refer this uh, mailbox problem to political situation or sanctions or, or something else, um, but um, because we do not uh, have any official explanations we just uh, communicate with our clients uh, by messengers, not by <laughs> mailbox. Uh, and um, so far, these are all, all news. I think that is all for today. Um, we have touched different, uh, different areas. I will be very grateful if you could share your practical situations and how you solve solving them. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome. I wish you a, a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Erzena. We, uh, when we prepared this webinar of today, 
we especially was looking to cover generally all the situation which is uh, related today to the sanctions to the uh, difficulties which uh, company uh, has i also know that uh, anna chulkova from our uh, member company padua epstein uh, 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 the general director requested me uh, to ask you because you have maybe some comments on additional comments on the yes uh... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Emma. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, Jenna. Thank you so much for such an interesting and relevant topic, the hottest uh, topic nowadays. Um, I would like to say uh, a little about the moratorium and uh, on bankruptcy. Um, for the first uh, time in 2020, you know. A uh, moratorium on bankruptcy uh, was imposed because of COVID restrictions. And uh, it applied only to some particular affected subjects. But uh, since uh, April, the first, the first of April, uh, a new moratorium is an uh, effect. Uh, this time is, uh, it is total and applies to everyone. And uh, it uh, they differs from um, last moratorium. Uh, Evgena uh, said that it uh, will uh, it uh, will be affected uh, for six months from uh, the first of uh, first of April to uh, first of October 2022 uh, in respect of any organizations, uh, citizens, uh, and individual entrepreneurs. Uh, the only exception is. Uh, uh, for developers, uh, if uh, their objects um, included uh, in the register of problematic objects uh, before the moratorium was introduced. Uh, I want to tell about um, uh, why was a moratorium on bankruptcy imposed. Uh, in a normal situation, uh, if a debtor uh, begins the experience financial problems. He or she and his or her uh, creditors uh, can go to court to institute uh, bankruptcy proceedings and settle their differences uh, with minimal loss. But uh, sometimes uh, uh, there are such several uh, fluctuation in the economy that it becomes um, difficult to apply bankruptcy precedents. Uh, when many businesses uh, were up in 2020 uh, because of COVID restrictions, uh, the classical question, question on, um, of bankruptcy law, save those businesses or shut uh, them down, didn't find uh, to answer. Uh, at the moment, um, nobody knows uh, how Adrena uh, said, nobody knows how long the ascensions uh, will last and what will happen if they are lifted. Um, uh, that is why I suppose that our government once again decided to froze uh, the situation and not rush uh, to decide the uh, fate of uh, businesses. Uh, the experience of uh, previous moratorium showed its effectiveness. Uh, many people feared uh, that there uh, would be uh, a wave of bankruptcies uh, after it ended, uh, but uh, there was uh, no sharp increase in the number of uh, bankruptcy cases and uh, of legal entities. Uh, this suggested uh, that the moratorium still uh, had a supporting effect. Um, it's um, uh, all what I, uh, I want to say. Our uh, our colleagues. Thank you, thank thank you, Anna. To uh, adding, and uh, I have just a question. But the moratorium, it's uh, on the legal procedure procedure of the bankruptcy. 
But in the case when the company has no, no more uh, cash flow, the, how it will happen? It will be some external management. What, what will be the reaction of the government? Uh, as I have said, we don't know what will happen. Uh, and um, um, uh, I want to tell that um, uh, the fundamental difference uh, of for this uh, moratorium from the COVID um, is it uh, was clean uh, then who was uh, affected. Now uh, there were even businesses uh, that uh, benefit from the situation. Um, now it's difficult to ed identify um, the victims. And uh, of course, uh, that is why our government imposed a total moratorium. Total moratorium. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Erzena, you have something to add to this? Uh, no, I have nothing to add to this. Okay. okay, thank you. Then we can pass to the questions. Uh, I believe uh, there will be a question. Uh, Stefan, yes, I see your hand. <clears throat> yes, thanks a lot. Um, very interesting. Um, I don't know if you can answer, but a lot of companies are opening now a legal entity in Kazakhstan or Central Asia to, to um, make things easier, not to avoid, but to make things easier. What is your opinion on that or what can be done via Kazakhstan so we are unblocking, I don't know, financial flows or things like that? Uh, well, I think, yes, uh, there, there really are a lot of companies who open uh, subsidiaries in Kazakhstan. First of all, uh, it is very, well, the Kazakhstan is a neutral country. Uh, by opening the and uh, permitting the parallel import, it could also be a very good option for uh, import goods. Also, um, I don't know uh, regarding the payments because I do not actually have a big um, experience in this uh, sphere. Maybe, maybe there are, uh, maybe it is easier for, for banking transfers via Kazakhstan. But I know that from the very beginning, Kazakhstan was used as a um, uh, point for delivery, even documents delivery, you know, like a hub. From, from the Netherlands to, the, to, to Kazakhstan and then to Russia. So I think that, um, yes, why not? It's, uh, it, it could help, but, uh, but, uh, but we don't know, maybe this also could be finished one day. We don't know how, for how long um, it, it will be a, 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 um, the window or, or something like, it's a, your personal risk, it's an entrepreneur risk, so you have to <laughs> calculate your <laughs> finance if you're ready to go um, for such risk, uh, you can, always. Thank you, Arjena. There is a uh, other questions? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, Thierry. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, you talk about uh, transfers of money from uh, Europe to um, Russia. Uh, you told, uh, as I could understand, as I well understood, it was not really a problem now. But uh, in my sight, it's really a problem because uh, my banks, my two banks, Pesera and Revolup, uh, don't allow. Uh, the transfer of money from Europe to Russia. It's uh, Baltic states, uh, yes, Lithuanian uh, banks. Uh. Yes, Lithuanian banks. Uh, but uh, I have heard uh, too that uh, ENG, for example, uh, BNP Paribas Fortis, don't allow this and it's uh, very difficult now. Um, I, I'm studying the possibility to move uh, to another country, uh, this uh, company. Uh, I asked it to Oleg if there were still bank working with uh, Russia. Uh, Raifazen, you told me, uh, Oleg, is uh, still working. Then uh, I'm analyzing uh, this uh, procedure, of course. But uh, how long it will be? And uh, I, for me, it's the most uh, problem I have now. 
Uh, it was not a, a question, but it was a yeah statement. Uh, the, uh, problem, the statement, yes. Yeah, but you, you know there is a, I think more problem for the moment to transfer money from Russia, for example, to to Belgium, uh, as I know, for example, than to receive. But in the same time. Uh, on each bank transfer, you must to provide uh, so many uh, many documents, uh, and more you provide to the banks, I think be better is it, uh, more fast this transaction can be done. Uh, we have mostly, as I said, the problem with the um, companies which would like to receive money in Belgium for the payment, for the imports and the services, and. Uh, we even now in discussion because um, there is a um, problem with the credit bank in, in Belgium uh, with the two transfer from our uh, one of our members and uh, we consider maybe to try to write today the letter uh, to the department of the ministry of finance of Belgium especially to 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 explain that the, this transfer can, it's only uh, consider uh, how to say the, the goods which was already delivered to Russia and secondly that there is a no uh, beneficiary uh, owner of uh, the companies uh, who is on the sanction lists but we will see how it will happen I know that uh, Water Van Gogh is also with us today and I was thinking to ask support of the Federation of Belgium Chamber to 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 support this request to the Ministry of Finance of Belgium. Uh, sorry, Arjen, maybe you have something to add. I was <laughs> answering um, my side. Oh uh, well, no, no, no. I think that your your option is very good because we need to, of course, uh, find out what is the reason of uh, non-sending of blocking of just putting on hold all payments. Unfortunately, we know that banks cannot provide you really and precise um, open information, and uh, because of their internal regulations, probably because actually there are no official. Uh, bans or no official restrictions, no legal acts which can stop such payments, but in practice we really face with, with them. And um, uh, I think that uh, your uh, way of solving this uh, problem could help. We will, we, will, we will see, but maybe some ones uh, participating today with us has already this problem with banks, because uh, for me, what I would like to determine it uh, which th there is an internal department of the Belgian bank, which, for example, block this payment, or they uh, must uh, get some authorization from some external uh, authority. Z I can only confirm we work with Raffaizen, and of course, everything is a bit more complicated, but everything works fine in two directions. So. That is maybe good, good, good advice. And and in Belgian side, uh, which bank is it, Stefan? Uh, KBC. KBC too. Uh, KBC. Uh, I see uh, Alexei Malchikov uh, from Belvén. I think uh, he's raised the hand. Uh, uh, yes, yes, dear colleagues, uh, hello. Unfortunately, I'm without uh, video now, but I would like to tell you about our experience. Uh, uh, we have a Belgian company in Belgium and Belgian company in Russia. And uh, we tried to pay at the beginning of this situation, we tried to pay to KBC uh, from our bank Absolute, which was uh, previously also in KBC group and now not. And although KBC bank uh, said that uh, they, will not, they, they will not accept in any circumstances payment from Russia, uh, they accepted it. This was strange uh, for us. But uh, our colleagues from Belgium asked us to pay to another bank. They have uh, three banks, KBC, BNP, and ING. And KBC mm -hmm. uh, said that they will not accept, although accepted. Uh, BNP uh, Paribas said that they will accept, but they will, uh, how to say, they will check all the circumstances, all the information, what, uh, where uh, money will come from, for what, and so on. And ING Bank said that they will easily accept any payment from Russia. Uh, 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 
in only on they will not accept only in case uh, this is sanctioned bank but absolute is not sanctioned bank so they um, the last our last payment was i think a couple of weeks ago everything went smoothly mm -hmm. alexey and kbc they give some explanation of uh, this decision because okay as i think as i understand each bank has license and they have to provide the services they cannot simply uh, refuse uh, to 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 how to say to to receive money from uh, some country. My, my colleague my colleagues didn't inform me about about the further con uh, conversation with KBC Bank. Uh, they just informed me that they will not accept, but they accepted, and then we stopped uh, to to pay to this bank, and that's all. But I but they I accepted. Don't, I don't have their, any further information. They accepted this payment, this uh, specific payment. Yes, yes, yes. But we decided together not to pay any more to this bank. Ah, okay okay thank you thank you alexey but okay with the, with the banks it's not so easy yeah? they are not very open uh, in communication uh, for the moment the, the, there is uh, some other questions uh, yeah, I yes i got a question um i was wondering um, how we as a software provider could help ease uh, the payment constraints especially in the food industry because actually we build cashier systems for mom and pop shops and we think about putting a place in Electronic Money Institute in Luxembourg uh, that runs on the blockchain. Um, that would help a lot of companies in our space, especially when we think about um, providing mixed mark, for example, with our cashier uh, ERP. Um, and they do reorders also from Russia uh, that would help that company to uh, send money immediately to suppliers because it's a peer-to-peer -peer communication. Um, what does the Russian government think about uh, specifically the blockchain since uh, we had the rumors about the complete cryptocurrency ban? And if so, um, if the cryptocurrency would be banned, so no stablecoin, no opportunities to switch ruble to stablecoin to euro, uh, what about the software itself? Uh, how could we help uh, Yeah, in the FMCG or CPG? Um, like how could we have the FMCG industry and the CPG industry with a blockchain payment solution, basically an API to a payment network that can be easily integrated into, um, uh, yeah, into e-commerce um, front end so that payment can flow from one person or one company to another company without using uh, directly um, the SWIFT or the SEPA network? Rjena, you have the answer about the... <clears throat> Cryptocurrency. The, 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 yeah, cryptocurrency. Uh, well, in in Russia, I think uh, as far as if I'm not mistaken, the cryptocurrency is not recognized as a uh, money as a payment uh, instrument official, and uh, they are talking now about uh, um, reported about cryptocurrency which uh, people have uh, on their accounts something like this but actually i'm 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 of course the the future of the cryptocurrency is uh, probably uh, <laughs> we have uh, some opportunities to use uh, this but uh, at the current situation in russia i don't think that it will be um, well officially uh, um, allowed uh, soon uh, Adlena, thanks for your answer. Probably I should clarify uh, yes, what we please. do more exactly. We sell a cashier and ERP system to mom and pop shops in Europe. Uh, however, they face troubles with payments, especially when they have suppliers in countries like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Russia. Um, the difference between cryptocurrency and the blockchain is uh, cryptocurrency is one application of the blockchain. At the end, uh, it is a payment network. Uh, the blockchain is a payment network which does not need intermediary banks. So instead of uh, using the usual bank payment rails, you send the money from one person to the other person or from one company to the other company. Um, since the, the Russian government was not pro-cryptocurrency, the question is how would such a software solution be affected by the ban of providing such, uh, such software as a Western company to uh, you know, CPG brands like um, the one of Thierry in order for him to pay um, or receive money? That was the specific question. 
Well, I unfortunately I cannot help you with this question. Okay, so <laughs> but probably I catch with uh, you up later, and we can. <laughs> yes, <one> maybe. <laughs> yeah, but very, for me it's like. Very <laughs> but <laughs> as a Luxembourgish company, uh, yes. uh, as a legal entity established in Luxembourg, any in any case you are uh, you are obliged to be. Uh, how to say uh, to be in compliance with all European sanctions. It means that you cannot uh, provide uh, just legal service. I don't know to send uh, some cash to Iran if uh, the, the, the 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 sector of economy it's not uh, authorized by the European Union. It's true, think... but when you sell software, it's different. We sell the ability to. We don't sell the the service itself. So we sell the technology to be executing that or license it. And the, when in respective to Iran, for example, you are allowed to provide software products, point of sale products to Iranian mom and pop shops as long as you have the, um, the authorization for it. It's not a complete ban. And that will be probably a solution for uh, Thierry, for example, to send and receive payments because actually the blockchain, the private ledger that we would build up it is a software solution to send information from A to B. And it, mm -hmm. can, be, it can be everything in that case. So that would be probably one solution. I can catch up with Ergena and with Thierry and figure out how it could be legal. So, uh, and thank how you. we can thank provide- you. Thank, you, good. I, I, thank I, you, Thank you, Constantine. We understood, thank you very much. But I think Thierry is not only in chocolate, chocolate business. He is also IT, uh, he has also IT oh, cool. what, what is your opinion on? IT yeah. consultant, in fact, yes, yes, nice. yes. But um, I'm I'm specialized in uh, data warehouses. Uh, okay, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> let's let's and, catch up uh, later. Yes, yeah, so then I have two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I have my uh, chocolate production in uh, Russia, just to to introduce uh, Alexandra Le Chocolat, and we produce uh, chocolates here in uh, Russia. And I have another company. Then in uh, in uh, I'm providing IT consulting in uh, in Belgium for different companies. But uh, my my problems uh, now is uh, just the transfer from Europe to to Russia, and of course uh, there are no sanctions against uh, the, the transfer, but the bank doesn't allow it. Then um, what to do against the bank? <laughs> it's uh, it's impossible. But uh, just uh, the the fact that's interesting uh, what uh, Stefan uh, told about uh, Raiffeisen. Uh, yes, I'm looking to, to work with them, but in Lithuania they don't have a bank, then uh, I need to, to change uh, the, some things in my company. But I will get a result, uh, certainly. It's a uh, job of a uh, general manager of a company to find solution, and uh, <laughs> Stefan knows it, and uh, everybody knows it uh, here, certainly. And we will find a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thierry, dear, dear friends. Edwin, the, Edwin, if there, Edwin yes. Edwin. Edwin, yes. Uh, yes. If I can add some things, uh, Evgenia, you mentioned about the visa. Uh, it was difficult to, to get visa for uh, Russian people to, to Belgium and uh, Netherlands. I, of course, I'm not a specialist of uh, visa, but uh, as I heard uh, in a Schengen uh, position, if you have a visa to, to France, for example, it's possible to travel in, uh, in Schengen uh, countries. I, I'm not a specialist uh, in visa, but inside. Yes, yes it's, it's true, it's true. That is why I told that uh, uh, before making uh, an invitation letter or visa for your colleagues, uh, please check. Uh, from which country it is possible, for example, France uh, is okay. The, the, then the first visit will be France, and then from France you can travel to other countries. But it's very, very, very how to say, it's not, it's very unclear because uh, I know, for example, that one of uh, our uh, Russian citizen, uh, director of the Belgian company, was traveling uh, to Italy, he was traveling to Netherlands, and uh, in his comments, he said that Netherlands was the most easy to in. Uh, they didn't request anything. They didn't request. Uh, it was uh, two two months ago about, but they didn't request uh, uh, vaccination certificate. They they just let him in without uh, without any questions. I think with the visa, it's really unclear because now also you you cannot uh, travel easily. Uh, there is no flight. 
there is no flights there is no no trains there is a uh, there is a ban now for uh, for for trucks uh, with the russian and belarusian number plates and uh, i think if now you must travel to netherlands and you would like to avoid to pass the the netherlands uh, border right? you just have to choose the flights from istanbul or from dubai uh, or from another uh, place uh, to the other european country and then it's not so big distance uh, by train there is a high speed train uh, going from uh, brussels to to netherlands uh dear colleagues we have more five minutes in our time edwin, edwin, uh, yeah, edwin, edwin. edwin you were was the question yes uh, yes indeed uh, just in, in uh, addition to what uh, thierry was saying my experience I, here i am in uh, alpha bank and in belgium i have uh, eng uh, in the beginning of the situation, I did some transfers and without any problem, because in Alpha Bank they guarantee me that they are still connected with the SWIFT. And last week I tried one more transfer, and uh, after three days they sent the money back and it was rejected by ENG in Belgium. So, and I uh, wrote them a question, how is their uh, policy about transfers to Russia, but of course no answer yet. Thank you, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Edwin. I, I have another question, a um, completely different one. Um, you know, in sanctions, there are also people uh, in the list, I think 800 people already in the meantime. Eh? And uh, if I'm a Belgian company and I do business with a company and the owner is on the sanction list, then probably I have a problem. Eh? But if this person is not the owner, but he's somewhere in the board of a company, uh, Joe is just like an independent board member of uh, a Russian company. Is that a reason that the, I cannot do business with this company or it should be when he's an owner of the company or she? Rena. Mm, I think that, uh, first of all, uh, ownership or um, a control uh, or otherwise controls the business. Okay. So if this person have a certain control, so he can be also, um, I think, um, considered as a person who is in sentient list. So it's not only the owner uh, ownership. Okay. But it it means that if uh, I don't know, is is uh, in the bo independent board of director. It means that he has he have control on the on the decision or um, maybe he's a. Uh, um, Chairman of the board, <laughs> he has a real control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so. it's really not uh, clear. But I yeah, hope, it's, uh, it's, yes, it's not really, really clear. Uh, but uh, we can just suppose that. Then I would like to thank all of you on behalf of the chamber. Thank you very much, uh, Erzena, Anna, Stefan. Thank you all, all uh, that give it uh, qu questions today. Um, we will try. We, we already request a few banks uh, on Russian side and also on, on Belgian and Luxembourg side about provide us a little more information. But uh, for the moment, they are muted. Uh, they are not uh, request to all us. Uh, also, I, I would like to say that um, probably in the next week or in two weeks we will have uh, belgium uh, customs uh, authority and uh, the um, three agency maybe two only agency from belgium the agency in uh, responsible for the dual use export from belgium we already uh, uh, have reached uh, agreement with the uh, brussels and uh, with flanders I hope the Walloonian side also will respond to us uh, and uh, we will maybe uh, have more information about the maintaining of uh, the uh, supply chain. Thank you very much again. Uh, have a good week. Have a good uh, Tuesday. And uh, thank you again, Arjena, Anna, Stefan, and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thanks Thank you. a lot. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Daniel. Nice to see you. Uh, Alex? Да, слушаю. Uh, Олег, один момент. Вы сейчас в конце что-то сказали по поводу двойного применения. Я прослушал. У вас там какие-то есть договоренности? Uh, no, we have no uh, uh, agreement or some some uh, some things with some how to say some he, he, hidden agreement with the, this board agency. We uh, just uh, uh, we just has. Uh, um, в общем, да, по-русски скажу, не могу, что-то у меня английский не идет, французские слова лезут. Алексей, нет, мы договорились с агентством под Dual Use Фландрии и Брюсселе, что они поучаствуют в нашем онлайн-мероприятии и расскажут о тех, как бы, ну, вот, о, о тех шагах, которым компании сегодня необходимо предпринимать, о тех документах, которые ну, необходимо предоставлять сегодня в сегодняшних условиях. И таможня расскажет немножко о том, как они разгружают, то что больше 10 тысяч контейнеров в Антверпене были приостановлены. То есть теоретически есть возможность, что будет разрешена поставка Dual Use в Россию? Нет, вы понимаете, тут, тут вопрос в чем. Вот там существуют продукты, которые попадают в Dual Use, да? но существует все равно exception из всех этих как бы, ну, листов. То есть дело в том, что Dual Use подразумевает использование того, что поставляется, например, в Россию, там, не знаю, в нефтегазовой сфере, там, в военной сфере или что-то такое еще, да, в случае, если, как бы, компания все-таки может доказать, допустим, что э, она, там, за последние, там, два года поставляла свою продукцию тем компаниям, которые так и не попали э, в санкционные листы, что это не попадет, то есть, как бы, гарантирует, что товар не попадет э, вот в те сектора, которые запрещены, в этом случае возможно, что они выдадут такой exceptional. Но, по крайней мере, так было вот до вот этих последних санкций, потому что мы проводили с ними в Брюсселе несколько мероприятий совместных, там, не знаю, в 2018 году, еще до всей, всей до, даже до пандемии, и хотели бы понять, как они сегодня смотрят на ситуацию. Mm -hmm. Не, ну просто мы же поставляли, мы поставляли, мы вот с сентября у нас истекло разрешение, мы делали разовые разрешения на каждую поставку, и нам там даже там одно или два разрешили, и у нас сейчас вот зависло.